where news comes first. This is ABC7 Extra. Good evening, I'm Saul Sainz, and this is ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition. Thank you for permitting us into your homes as you wind down after watching the Super Bowl. Tonight, I want to talk about another contest, an election where you can decide the outcome. It's not just Valentine's Day that will be celebrated tomorrow. It's also the first day of early voting in the Texas primaries. One election that is being closely watched pits two Democrat state representatives running for the same seat, District 79. Representative Claudia Ordaz Perez against that district's incumbent, Art Fierro. Now, how did all this happen? Well, you may recall the Census Bureau held its 2020 census. It showed El Paso had the slowest population growth in 80 years. The new population numbers triggered the redrawing of state district maps. These are the two maps right here, the before and after. Uh, before the, and, and after the redrawing of the maps, that we had five district seats. One, two, three, four, five. And then, well, that was uh, the, the one that Ordaz Perez was elected to was District 76. Now, it, uh, it covers the lower valley and where she lived, but now District 76 was eliminated. She has chosen to run in this District 79, currently represented by Art Fierro. Ordaz Perez says she owns a home in District 79. She represented part of that area when she was a city representative. What followed was political maneuvering, the changing of an address, and finger pointing that led to a court battle to try to keep Ordaz Perez from running to represent District 79. That attempt failed, and now the two will face off during the Democratic primary, which has no Republican candidate in essence. Whoever wins the primary wins the seat. Joining us to talk about District 79 race is Representative Claudia Ordaz Perez. Ms. Ordaz Perez was representing District 76 before boundaries were redrawn. She is challenging District 79 incumbent Art Fierro. Mr. Fierro took over what was left of Joe Pickett's term when Pickett resigned due to health issues, but Fierro won the following election outright serving a full term. Now, I'm going to start with you, Ms. Ordaz Perez. You had the choice of either running for District 79 or District 77, currently held by Lina Ortega, where your original home is. Why did you choose 79 rather than 77? Sure, and, and thank you, Sal, for, for that question. So the way the, the way the, the redistricting process worked, so House District 76 that I currently represent was pretty much just split in half. So half of it went to District 77, and then half of it went to District 79. Um, you know, this is a unique situation, as you had mentioned, something that is not really happening across the state, but it's happening here in El Paso. Instead of five representatives, it is now down to four. And at the end of the day, I mean, when we're talking about the whole redistricting process, El Paso grew. We grew, just not at the same level of Dallas or Houston or, or other cities like that. There are other counties east of us that did lose in population. If there were, if there were supposed to be a pairing, it, it should have been there. Unfortunately, politics came into play through all of this. You all covered the, uh, the quorum break, the fight that Democrats fought for to, uh, against the voter suppression bill, and now we're here today. So it was a difficult decision that had to be made, um, you know, whether it was District 77, District 79. Uh, District 79 is the area that I grew up, uh, served there, served, uh, had the opportunity of serving there on city council, graduate of Montwood High School, grew up those are my stomping grounds on the east side and so it was a, it was a difficult choice but at the end of the day when i was looking at what had happened through such a tumultuous session you know representative ortega and myself we were the last uh we we did not waver on our fight for for voting rights and at the end of the day they pitted us together uh two latinas together and and i do want to mention this in texas Women represent over 50% of the voting population, but only 38 of us are represented out of 150. And I couldn't in good conscience when I was looking at, at this race. I mean, Representative Ortega stood firm. We stood shoulder to shoulder, shoulder, to shoulder on, our, on our fight for voting rights. I couldn't in good conscience want to run against another Latina when there's not enough of us represented in the Texas House. Mr. Fierro, you tried unsuccessfully to have Ms. Ordaz Perez removed from the ballot. Why? Well, there's still questions on whether the dates were correct when, uh, when she moved from her house in Lower Valley, which she moved there to run for city council, to the house that she allegedly owns on the east side. Um, so there was just confusion in dates and where does she live, where does she live now? Those are all just questions that keep coming up and I keep getting constituents who call and ask those questions um, 
over and over. You're still not convinced that she lives in uh, District 79? You know, it's, um, I'm running a, a race, um, um, I, a race that I think um, the, the constituents in District 79 are going to uh, support me and bring me back again. I'm very, very proud of the work we've done in District 79. You know, I have an office, at, a full-time office at 1790 Lee Trevino that's, that's manned by, by people. Uh, we've touched over 600 constituents within constituent inquiries uh, since it's been open. During the pandemic, in the midst of uh, a time when El Pasoans really need help, needed help accessing their Texas Workforce Commission dollars, we were able to help over 1,000 people to, uh, reach their, uh, get their monies that they needed and they deserved. So absolutely, I think that uh, we're going to continue to work hard. You know, touching doors, knocking on doors, asking people for their support, for their continued support. You know, we've gotten great responses. Yeah, one, of the big th one of the biggest things we've heard is, is about um, uh, taxes. And, you know, when I sat on the community college board for 13 years, we raised taxes twice. Um, during Ms. Ms. Ordaz Perez's time on city council, she can't, she can't say that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they raise taxes every year. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a, you know, it's a passion. I'm going to continue to work and continue to work hard for the constituents of District 79. El Paso lost an entire district, an entire seat. We went from five state representatives to four living in El Paso County. Did either of you two try rescuing that seat? Did anyone from the delegation try rescuing that seat? Or do you believe it was just a done deal? I'll start with you, Mr. Fierro. Oh, absolutely. I think all five people in the delegation worked very diligently to save that seat. We all came up with plans that kept all five seats um, intact, well not intact, but, but um, in place with the, the seat being held in El Paso. You know, for example, I even came up with an option or offered an op option that would send my seat all the way towards Odessa. Um, and and um, Dr. Gonzalez, she, she had a plan that sent her, her district all the way out to, towards Maverick County. So absolutely, everybody had options um, that, that we presented to keep the delegation intact. Unfortunately, this is a numbers game. You know, 197,303 people is the optimum number. And, and when you multiply that by five representatives, El Paso didn't grow to a million people. So, so what happens is, if you look at the growth in the other parts of Texas, at one time, um, Travis County was having 100 people moving in there a day. The growth is all up and down I-35. El Paso grew, we grew at 6%. Mr. Fierro, if, if, if I can interrupt you. Sure. Uh, Mr. Las Pedas, you're nodding. You, do you would disagree with this? Did anyone ever try to, to, to save your, your district? You know, so yes, through the process, we did submit a map um, that would retain the five seats in El Paso. A and if this were a numbers game, you would see that El Paso did grow. We did grow. We were supposed to retain five seats. The counties east of us lost population. If there was supposed to be a pairing there, that would have happened, would have happened. At the end of the day, this was politics. I'm going to say it how, is, how it is. This was politics at the end of the day. Those members on the, on, on the east uh, part of El Paso County, they never broke quorum. Um, again, Representative Ortega and I were the last to waver on our fight for voting rights. And I've said this time and time again, I received phone calls from my colleagues uh, that I serve with, begging us, pleading us to, to come back um, to make quorum. And if that was the case, they were worried. They're like, you are, you are going to be in trouble when it comes to redistricting. And the, the response that I said to them, I'm, I'm not, that's not why I got into public service to begin with. I'm not going to sell out. I'm not going to sell out my constituents. I'm not going to sell out our values. I'm a fighter. I'm going to continue to be a fighter. And this is, if, if that's what ends up happening, that's really unfortunate because this should strictly just be on the numbers, like Mr. Fierro says. If it was just strictly about the numbers, El Paso would have retained five Based, seats. based on can, can what I you're saying. Can I thought on, on that? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah okay. as a matter of fact, based on what you're saying, you're alleging that Mr. Fierro and obviously Moody broke ranks and returned to, to, to Texas. Is that what you're saying? So there were, there were several um, members of, of the Democratic Party, yes, that did return, and Mr. Fierro Is that was why you one believe you were targeted? We absolutely. Representative Ortega and myself were the last to return. We were the last to waver on, on, on the fight against, against voting rights. Mr. Fierro, I'll give you a chance to respond. No, thank you very much. It's numbers. If you multiply 197, 303 people 
times five, it does not come out to 800,000, 600, whatever the, the census says we are in El Paso. It's a number game. If you look at uh, I-35, the growth is there. You know, we had it, unfortunately, you know, and we tried our best to move one of us out further east to keep the five, um, the five districts housed in El Paso, but it's all numbers. There's no way you can divide 197, uh, 303 into 800,000 and come up with five members. Yeah. Speaking of that uh, walkout, uh, Ms. Ordaz Perez, you say you said in, in um, Washington, uh, after some of your colleagues went back to, to Austin, you missed a special session. What did you personally accomplish during that time after most Democrats had left that made you forfeit your role in Austin? You know, so this was a very divisive session. I mean, it's, uh, you know, the Texas House takes a lot of pride in how uh, bipartisan, uh, the, how bipartisan in nature the Texas House of Representatives is. It's looking a lot like Congress right now, where it is incredibly divisive, where things are moving far, far right, far, far left. Even amidst all of that and how polarized it's becoming, I'm, I'm really proud that we were still able to accomplish so much um, it just in, in my first term as, as a freshman coming in, $386 million for small businesses, parental leave benefits for Texas employees. Uh, we worked on a veterans bill that helps veterans with disabilities and helping uh, our students if with trauma-informed policies. If I may, what did you accomplish while you were in Washington after all your colleagues went back to Austin? That's that was Absolutely. So, yes. So the whole purpose of the quorum break and, and Sal, this is not something that Texas use, uses lightly. This is not like DC. This is the fourth time in Texas's history that this has ever happened. It was a tool that's hardly ever used. And the whole purpose of this is to ensure that because of how divisive it was, how are we going to bring back, deliver something for our constituents back home? We had the, the power when we were breaking quorum we were, as Democrats, trying to figure out what can we do, how can we make this bill less tolerable um, than, than what it currently exists today? Um, because it's, it's a terrible bill that's going to have ramifications for decades to come. Mm -hmm. And so that was the plan. We, had, we wanted a seat at the table, but unfortunately, uh, you know... We lost a seat. <laughs> no, no. Unfortunately, members, Democratic members, started going back you know, and, and th so all of that power, like we had the keys to the car, you know, we had them and we just gave them up. We were so close. It's like what, you know, my opponent was just saying recently, he was like, you know, there was w one plan. It was just to be gone for a month. I'm like, so we, we made all this media. We, we drew all the support from all these Democratic groups, so on and so forth. Members from all across the nation were coming to our aid just to say that we are gone for a month. Okay. That, that was the plan. It just doesn't make any we're, sense because that doesn't accomplish anything. Okay. We're going to take another uh, a really quick break. You're watching ABC 7 Extra Sunday Edition. Still ahead, we'll take a look at both Ordaz Perez and Fierro's voting record. Key among the questions, what meaningful bills were sponsored and passed by either representative? I'll ask my guests when we come back. You're watching ABC 7 Extra Sunday Edition, where news comes first. Hey, Josh. Yes, Mr. Lopez? Check out these camera views on my Silverado. I can see in front of me, on either side of me. It's so almost nothing gets past me. Understand? Yes, sir. The Chevy Silverado offers eight cameras with up to 15 different views. Find new views, find new roads. Very well-qualified buyers can get 0% financing on Silverado limited crew cab pickups. Plus, current competitive owners get an additional $750 bonus cash. New models are arriving weekly. Secure yours today. Many years ago, the young Romanov princess went missing. Now, a woman has appeared with no name and no past, but with the drive to discover her destiny. Her past is a mystery. Her future is an adventure. Anastasia, the Broadway musical. March 1st and 2nd at the Plaza Theater. Buy tickets at ElPasoLive.com or the Plaza Theater box office. I'm Jorge Rivas, and I am humbly asking for your vote for Judge of County Court at Law Number 3 on March 1st. As a retired field artillery and JAG officer, I'm the only veteran in this race. I'm also an associate judge for El Paso, and I bring over 16 years of judicial experience. With over 23 years of experience, I am committed to treating people with dignity and respect. It's your court, and I am ready to humbly serve you as judge of County Court at Law Number 3. Who are we?
Welcome back to ABC 7 Extra Sunday Edition. I spoke to former representatives, one of them being Joe Pickett. They all tell me the most effective legislator is one who holds a committee chairmanship in the Texas State House. So, Mr. Rodas Perez and Mr. Fierro, I did some research, and while both of you serve on several committees, not one member of the delegation holds a chairman post. It's worth noting Representative Joe Moody was the Speaker Pro Tem, but was stripped of that title when he walked out and left to Washington. What can you do to increase your influence in the legislature, and why do you think you're a better position than your opponent to do that? I'll start with you, Mr. Fierro. Well, thank you very much, Tom. You know, it's developing relationships. It's working, it's listening, it's being respectful. Um, as I mentioned earlier, from day one, I worked on uh, opposing Senate Bill 1, the horrible uh, voter suppression bill. In there, we offered um, uh, bills that would a were able to have solutions, able to really come up with answers to try and make this bill better. You know, I introduced a bill to make um, voting uh, a, na a state holiday to answer some of the, the, the logistics issues. I offered a bill to have um, voting, uh, your voter registrations. When the issue comes up and it's wrong, instead of having to mail it back to you and you're missing a date, you could do it online. We'll, we'll get we'll get your voting record in just a second, but we're talking about chairmanship positions and committees. What is it that you t that you can do, if elected, to gain a chairmanship position within the committees? Because you, you both serve on committees. I, sure. I, I did the research and I know you do, but what can you do to position yourself to become a chairman of some of the committees which actually holds power in the legislature. No, no, and that, and that was part of the answer. I, you know, by building these bridges, by building these uh, relationships, absolutely, you, you get in line to, do, to be a chairperson. When the chairperson comes up, yes, you get to dictate the, the, the agenda and what moves forward. But also, if you're a participating member of a committee, absolutely you have a voice. You know, uh, it, again, going back to elections, I was able to convince the chair of elections committee who was staunch against it to allow people to to testify he wanted to cut him off one day we spent 21 hours listening to people I thought it was out of respect that we hear him out the second time and we did that's how you become a chairman you develop relationships you become uh, you get respect from your colleagues on both sides of the aisle and so that's how you do it Mr. Las Perez and and I'm I'm so glad you asked this question because this again this race is so important it's so unique because this is unique to the, the, the state of Texas, right? And so when you look at both of us, I mean, it's unique that there's two Democratic incumbents running against each other. So it's important to look at that record that you're talking about in specific. As I had mentioned, I have um, passed the 386 million for small businesses, parental leave benefits, so on and so forth, as I had mentioned earlier, because I know we're, we're limited on time. Just in my first term, I've authored and passed more legislation than my opponent has in his entire tenure. And that's important now that we're going to be losing a seat. Joe Pickett is right. Representative Pickett is right. Chairmanships matter. And, you know, uh, Dr. Gonzalez, she's still on appropriations. Even though uh, Moody was still stripped of that title, I mean, that's still, he, there's still some influence there. We only have now four seats, so we need to ensure that we have the hardest working representatives there delivering for El Paso. Now, and it's unique because it is so polarized now from the left and to the right. And so I'm proud that I have over 15 uh, endorsements from my own Democratic colleagues. I get along very well with my Republican colleagues, and that's why I was able to get this much done in such a toxic with, environment. With this position yourself to uh, get in a chairmanship in a committee, which was the question that, that we started with? God willing, one day. <laughs> so so I, I, I certainly hope so. The, the thing that we worked on last session is ensuring that more women are represented in these, in these uh, positions. And so you had more vice chairs than, than ever before. Um, and we're certainly going to continue that fight. I'm part of the Women's Equal Equality Caucus. So you better believe we're going to be there fighting to ensure that there's equal representation. 30 seconds, Mr. Fierro. So, unfortunately, this, this uh, election has turned into half-truths. Uh, Ms. Rodasped has just mentioned she did more in one than I did. Let me just give you an example. She did 76 bills, and I've done 126, 28. Sponsored or co-sponsored? Sponsored. Sponsored. Joint author and sponsored. And she uses all three. Now, if you go back awesome. and if you need to look it up, look up TexasLegislationOnline.com, and they'll give you. You can do the math there. Mr. Las Perez. Okay, so this. Thirty seconds. Just to explain, an author is your bill. Again, uh, and then a co-author is a bill that you sign on to for support. He has not authored and sponsored um, a single bill that passed this session. 
uh, that and when you look and you can look it up go to that website as he's mentioning and you'll see the record very clear Mr. Fiora, what I was able again, to offer Again, using that, that using now changing the criteria I'm still at 57 and she's still at 31. Mr. So Fiora, it doesn't matter how you Mr. do that. Again it's your your legislation that that you pass that you author and pass 386 million for small business parental leave so on and so forth when you look at what Mr. Ferro did he did not author or pass a single piece of legislation last session and we need we need imperative we need strong, hardworking leadership in this upcoming session since we're now down to only four seats. On that note, we're going to take another break. You're watching ABC 7 Extra Sunday Edition. Still ahead, I'll ask both candidates to lay out their best sales pitch as to why they believe they are the best candidate to represent District 79. We'll be right back. This weekend only at Ashley's President's Day Early Access Sale. Save 25% off your first item plus 20% off the rest of your purchase. Or get 0% interest for five years with three months payment assistance. Friday through Monday only at Ashley. I know this may look like a classic rooftop chase scene. But it's an Nissan salesman ad. Right on cue. This rogue's got more power than that CRV. Might want to hold on. Hurry in for a low 297 per month lease on Frontier. The action never ends, but these offers will. Our community is safer thanks to our defenders by ensuring that convicted drivers are held responsible, helping families torn by domestic violence find peace again by helping us build a better community. But not all defenders wear capes. Some wear robes. Judge Gonzalez has brought honesty and professionalism to our county court. Let's keep it that way. Political ad paid for by Judge Julie Gonzalez campaign, Hector Zabaleta treasurer. I'm Judge Julie Gonzalez, and I'm asking for your vote. Think premium can't be capable? Think again. The GMC Sierra AT4. Premium and capable. That's professional grade from GMC. Or claim your purchase allowance on 2022 Sierra Limited Elevation Crew Cab models for an MSRP under 47,000 on this Sierra. Friday through Monday only at Ashley's President's Day Early Access Sale. Save 25% off your first item plus 20% off the rest of your purchase. Or get 0% interest for five years with no money down. Four days only at Ashley. Welcome back to ABC 7 Extra Sunday Edition. I also want to welcome back my guest for this third and final segment. Claudia Ordaz Perez is running for District 79 after the seat she was representing uh, was eliminated. District 76 was done away with after the Texas House District map was redrawn. District 79 representative incumbent Art Fierro is also with us. It should be noted, although Ordaz Perez is outpacing Fierro in fundraising, both of you are getting a substantial amount of contribution from Republicans. Ms. Ordaz Perez? Yes, uh, you know, since my time even on city council, it's important that you have support, whether it's from Democratic groups, um, you know, Republicans, um, business members of our community. And I'm really happy to, to note that the, the people that support me have done a tremendous work in, in, in El Paso. I'm, I'm proud to have new endorsements that I haven't had before. Like I said, over 15 uh, members of the Democratic uh, uh, caucus are, are now supporting me. Uh, working Families Party for my fight on voting rights, um, and also Tejano Democrats. Um, they were they gave me an award for Freshman of the Year again for for my fight on on voting rights. So I'm I'm tremendously grateful for the 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 immense amount of support that we've been getting from small donations to like thirty six dollars to upwards um, much higher than that. And as I'm well just, as coming from just Republicans, yeah. Right, and it's 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 a it's a full bag um, from all from all spectrum spectrums, whether it's Democrats or Republicans. Mr. Fierro? Yeah, let me answer the question. So, so if you look at uh, um, my candidate's uh, last fundraiser, the host committee is made up of billionaires, millionaires, and all that Republicans that all supported um, either Abbott or his opponent. You know, so the question is addressing that. That's that's what the question is. You know, being huge. I have not gotten the huge support, huge um, uh, support from Republicans. Republican donors to the point that, that um, my opponent has 
I, I'll continue to work on small donate uh, off of small donations. I'll continue to be accountable, transparent. I won't run a half uh, truth race. This is going to be about honesty. This is going to be about rolling your sleeves up, being uh, available to your constituents, having a full time office. That's what you're going to get with Art. Ms. Ordaz Perez, you've uh, just been accused yes. of half truths. Yes, so uh, half truths, transparency. So, for the record, the same. Um, this, this same group of, of Republicans or members of the business community that are supporting me had a fundraiser for Mr. Fierro before this, the, the first session that when he, when he had first started. So he's received the same support from the same people. This go around though, they are not, um, you're not gonna see that, that support. They had to choose, they're looking on who's gonna be more effective. Obviously, when you look at the records, um, they, 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 are, they are supporting me, but it's, it's really, um, it's concerning when he's saying he's all about transparency, uh, being being open and honest. When he has received the same funding from the same members of our community, they're just not showing up on his report now, but they certainly have uh, in the past. We're so slightly we're we're slight to touch on half truths. I mean, when you look at the dollar amount versus uh, that uh, Mr. Das Perez has received from this group versus any I've ever gotten from them. It's not, it's not even close. It's the okay. same. I token races, but it's, the it's same not though. the same. No, the dollar amounts are not even close. We are slaves to the, to the clock, so I'm going to continue. Fundraising has been a huge issue. There is a Democratic progressive group called Better Democrats Coalition. According to the Texas Tribune, they are heavily involved in endorsing candidates in two intra-party disputes, District 79 being one of them. That coalition is endorsing Ordaz Perez. Um, uh, Shafiro, are you concerned about this? I'm going to continue to um, knock on doors. As I'm knocking on doors, we're getting great responses. We're going to start making phone calls. Um, money is not going to dictate this race. What's going to dictate this race are the voters in District 79. Outside influences, outside money is not good. It's going to be local people. It's going to be local elected officials who are endorsing me. It's going to be the my neighbor who's going to go vote for me. It's going to be that those small checks that are, are, are being contributed to my campaign. This is a local race that is going to be won at a local level. Okay, well, before I hear from both of you on your, the best reasons why you believe that you can best represent District 79, what is it that you think is on the top of the next legislative session for the wish list for this delegation, Ms. Rodas Perez? You know, so just talking to, going door to door, you know, it's, it's really hard to hear a lot of these stories where people are still reeling, still really hurting through, through uh, COVID because we're still in the middle of this pandemic. Um, a lot of job losses, a lot of teachers that are overworked, underpaid. So that's definitely gonna be at the forefront of my mind coming in and especially economic uh, development opportunities in our region, job growth opportunities in our region. I sit on the International Relations and Economic Development Committee where I passed my $386 million for small businesses for COVID relief. This, pr the priority for me coming in is how we're gonna lure companies uh, back into the Texas border region, especially in El Paso, um, to bring these companies here uh, so that we can definitely provide more jobs uh, for, for El Pasoans here because again so many people it's time and time again that are just still really hurting from from COVID. Mr. Fio? Health care, mental health treatment is number one. You know with, because of the COVID we're going to need more and more therapists who are going to be out there working with our constituents day in and day out. I'm going to continue to file bills when it comes to t uh, telemed in spite of the pushback from um, insurance agencies. Teachers, teachers pay. We have to pay teachers a premium wage if we expect a premium education. And we cannot forget about our retired teachers. It's been 20 years since they've gotten a COLA. And um, we've submitted a bill that's going to, uh, that's in the entry committee for study, and they've accepted it. So hopefully they'll come up with something good. In spite of that, we're gonna file that bill when we get in back for the ADA. Ms. Ordaz Perez, 30 seconds for your closing argument. Well, I want to thank you, Saul, for, for hosting us here and thank the viewers for, for watching. Again, this is just a really unique race, uh, something that's not happening in any other part of the state of Texas. So I just really encourage you all to, to come out and vote. Uh, look, as I mentioned, as we spoke about earlier, on our record, you know, it's going to be more imperative now more than ever, now that we're losing a seat from five down to four. And so it's going to be imperative that we have people that are going to be a hard hardworking, you all knew my fight against the medical waste facility and what we did there, fighting for media and landscaping, fighting for animal welfare reform, fighting for women's rights, voting rights. 
you, you know my record, and I'm thankful to all of you uh, for giving me the opportunity to serve. 30 seconds, Mr. Fierro. Thank you so much. First and foremost, I come with a proven record. I have results. Look at my 13 years in the Community College Board. All the, all the accolades that the board had, got all the, the Community College successes, absolutely that's where we, we need to focus on. I, I, got, I brought back, I obtained um, the airport and Fort Bliss into District 79. Prior to that, it was going to be represented by somebody 550 miles away. This race is about truth, transparency, and hard work. And please support myself for House, uh, House District 79, where you need somebody who's going to come to work every day. Mr. Arfiero, Mr. Las Perez, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. And remember, the first day of early voting is tomorrow. Election Day is March 1st, the day you get to exercise your civic duty. Thank you for sharing your Sunday evening with us before the start of your work week. I'm Saul Sainz, and this has been ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition. Good night and buenas noches.